So my last video about redstone computers did pretty well, relatively speaking, in like the terms of the analytics of my YouTube channel. So I've decided to follow it up with this series on how to build redstone computers. A lot of the tutorials um, and whatnot I've seen online are pretty good, but they rely heavily on the fact that you already know a bunch about basic computer knowledge and whatnot. Um, but for many, that's really not the case. So my goal for this series is to make it so that even someone with zero knowledge about computers as a whole can watch this video and just go out and build a redstone computer but also understand what they're doing and why that like specific part is useful or whatever and not just like blindly build it because of the story so for this first installation we're going to focus on the basics of a computer and throughout the video i'll be referencing this set of diagrams there's also a really great website where i got these diagrams from and i highly suggest you take a look at it after this video so to start off the most basic thing you should understand is logic gates and just as the name suggests it performs logic there are eight types which we'll be going through here in minecraft and they're called the buffer gate the and gate or gate xor gate inverse gate nand gate nor gate and xor gate we'll go through them in detail as we get to them in the video but i would highly suggest you build these along with the video because they're basically essential to any cpu so first off we got the buffer gate and this one's pretty straightforward it's just a lever with a redstone line connected to a torch um, and basically the significance of this and why it's called a buffer gate is because when you turn it off there's a one tick delay pretty straightforward here we have the inverse gate and it's exactly this with a inverse and this one has a two tick delay just because of the redstone torch so yep here we have the or gate again pretty straightforward one or the other or both but it has to have one of up the nor gate which is just the uh, or gate except we have a redstone torch so you have to turn one or the other on to turn the lamp off here we have the and gate and you have to turn this one and this one on for that to turn on so one on doesn't work the other one doesn't work but both of them on work and just a quick 360 so you can figure out how to build this there we go over here we have the nor gate which is exactly that except it's inverted so turning both of them on will turn this lamp off again pretty straightforward quick 360 there over here we have the xor gate and this one's a little more complicated but basically it's exclusive or so similar to this one it's one or the other except here you cannot do both so it's this one or this one but not both and a quick 360 to see how this works all right over here we have the xnor gate and this one again is pretty straightforward it's exactly this except inverted right at the end so one or the other turns that off so one or the other but not both and there we have it and so now for the actual parts of the cpu first up we've got the alu and that just does all the logic and arithmetic functions of the computer this is essentially like the core part of the cpu that then leads into the accumulator which is essentially a buffer um think of it as ram but you can't access it it just stores data from the alu and sends it out when it's ready now that goes to the ram which is random access memory most of you might be familiar with that and that just stores information but only temporarily uh, the ram then feeds into the instruction register and program counter the instruction register also called the instruction set is what tells the computer what to do it's kind of like an encoder for what the computer should do and the program counter talks with the alu to figure out what the next logical step is in its sequence these are all connected to multiplexers which just select the input from which it wants to read pretty simple to understand and finally the decoder which takes the binary output and converts it into base 10. For our build I'm also going to include an encoder which just makes it so that our UI looks better and also a clock. I'm not sure why this one doesn't include it but the clock is basically essential. So that's the end of this video. In the next video we will start the actual construction of the CPU with the ALU. If you have any questions or just want to show off new ideas I've created a discord server link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.